Welcome to North Carolina. Thank you all so much uh, for being here. The North Carolina team and I are so excited and honored that you picked us. We can't do this without you. Um, and together we can and will defeat Donald Trump and his dangerous agenda. So thank you all so much for being here. Give me a woot woot in the chat if you're from North Carolina. Um, love to see it, love to see it. Woo woo, oh yes, all these one North Carolinians. We love to see it. Speaking of people supporting North Carolinians, it is my honor to, it, to introduce Representative Chaz Beasley, who's going to be talking to us for a few minutes, too. So, you know, those native North Carolinians in the chat raise up for Representative Beasley. He represents District 92, which is part of Mecklenburg County, Charlotte area, in the North Carolina House of Representatives. So I'm going to kick it over to Chaz. Thanks, Lexi, and thanks everybody for hopping on. It's great to see so many people that understand the importance of North Carolina and the importance of this election. So I wanna start off by hearing from all of you out there, and there's a reason why you picked North Carolina as your adopted state, and so we wanna hear why. So if you can go into the chat function and put your reasons why you're supporting North Carolina as your adopted state and why it's so important in this national election, we'll take a few seconds just to take a look. And one of the things that I'm seeing right off the bat is the state Senate seat and that some of you have connections to North Carolina. I've seen some people talking about uh, their, their different schools and repping where they went. That's great to see. Um, and it's also great to see that so, so many people understand that this year is gonna be such a consequential election. So I'll tell you a little bit about why I uh, believe that North Carolina is such an important year. It's such, it's such an important year for North Carolina and such an important year for the country as a whole. So I know many of you have been in quarantine, which means you're probably watching a ton of Netflix. And I've been doing the same thing. And I know a lot of you are probably uh, re-watching West Wing for the third or fourth time, like me, all the way through. And one of my favorite West Wing scenes is when one of the characters is talking about the French Revolution and mentions a French radical that's sitting in a salon and looks out a window and sees people who are walking by with pitchforks and lanterns. And they say, oh, there go my people. Let me find out where they're going so I can lead them. And that's the kind of leadership that we all too often get in places like North Carolina and nationally. People who, instead of trying to be a part of the forefront of change, are instead trying to figure out how they can catch up with the public. And I think we've seen that in particular with the George Floyd protests over the past few uh, weeks and, and uh, days. That we have people that, instead of trying to actually push discourse, instead of actually trying to talk about the things that are important, they're trying to catch up with everybody else. And that's the reason why it's so very important that we have people who are willing to be strong progressive voices on the forefront, who aren't afraid of the political wins, who are willing to talk about the things that matter to everyday people and in their lives. And here in North Carolina, we have seen it all. We've seen a Democratic governor who's fighting against people who are trying to not have us use things like science and data and facts to figure out when we need to reopen our economy. We've seen the fact that we have a six to one Supreme Court majority on our state Supreme Court, but we've also seen the fact that we have a state legislature that has been run by Republicans for the past 10 years. And that has led to really bad outcomes for a lot of people in North Carolina. In particular, I'm thinking about the fact that we had a court case that talked about how our districts in North Carolina were drawn to target African Americans with surgical precision to keep them out of power. I'm reminded of the fact that we passed one of the worst anti-LGBTQ laws in the country, HB2, a few years ago. Um, but I'm also reminded of the fact that, believe it or not, in one of the most surreal days of my time in General Assembly, we actually had people who passed a, a bill through the House to keep people who run over protesters with their cars from being sued. That's a real thing that really happened in our legislature. And that's part of the reason why it's so important that we have change down here. Now, here's the good news. No matter what kind of politics you have or what kind of change you wanna see, North Carolina has it going on this year. If you want to be involved in a battleground state for president, we have it here. And if North Carolina goes blue, that makes it very, very, very hard for the current occupant of the White House to get another term, which is tremendously important. Many of you have mentioned Cal Cunningham's race for the U.S. Senate. We want to make sure 
especially in a week like this where we saw the importance of the Supreme Court, that we have a Democratic held Senate that can get good judges and justices on the bench, as well as passing an agenda for President Biden. And we also know that we have congr uh, congressional races up here. We have state Supreme Court races here. But also one thing that's really important to me is that we have a chance to flip both chambers in the North Carolina legislature. Now you might be saying, well, how does that affect me? Well, North Carolina is gonna get another congressional seat. And we've picked up seats in North Carolina because of redrawing the districts. In North Carolina, all it takes is a one vote majority in a house to redraw congressional seats because the governor can't veto them. So if you wanna make sure that Nancy Pelosi can keep her gavel, then you wanna make sure that you're investing in North Carolina because we need to make sure that our state legislature flips and that it flips in favor of people that believe in things like independent redistricting so that politicians are not picking their voters, voters are picking their politicians. And so really what it comes down to is this y'all, no matter where you live in the United States, what happens here in North Carolina affects you there. So we have to be really, really keyed in on what's gonna happen here in North Carolina over the next few months. Now, when I ran for office in 2016, I was 29 years old. I was running in a Republican seat. I was running in a seat that was actually a majority white seat, about 20% black. And a lot of people didn't give me a chance to win because they said it's a Republican held seat. How can a Democrat win there? With the hard work of strong organizers like many of the people that are on this call, we flipped that seat from red to blue in a tough year for Democrats. But once we got into office, we didn't just focus on just winning, we actually focused on delivering real change for people. So just this past year, I was very proud to be the author of a bill to modernize our sexual assault and child protection laws in North Carolina. Through a in a conservative legislature, we got that done at a time when people said you can't touch those kind of issues. So I want everyone in this call to remember that it's important that we win, but it's more important that when we win, that lives change. In politics, you're in the life changing business. We have got to make sure that we do better when it comes to making sure that better lives are made for people. So here's what it comes down to, y'all. If you invest in North Carolina, you're investing in leadership that's gonna make sure that healthcare is strong, that we fight back against this pandemic with everything we've got, that we're fighting for educators and working people, and that we're fighting against racism, not just not just being not racist, but anti-racist, that we're fighting against homophobia, that we're fighting against anti-Semitism, that we're fighting against sexism, that we're fighting for a state and a country where everybody matters and where we get policies that reflect that. So you're doing the right thing by investing in North Carolina. I'm a little bit biased, but I understand that every single one of you are gonna be so very critical. And the things that we do here are gonna make our country and our state better. So with that, Lexi, thanks for giving me a chance to, to speak on this really important issue and I'll, I'll toss it back over to you. Well, thank you so much, Representative Beasley. Um, for all of you who have not, who, uh, who don't know who this wonderful representative is, he has been fighting for North Carolina all his life. He is a wonderful, I'm so happy to call him a leader in the NCGA and a wonderful co-chair co -chair for organizing together North Carolina. And we love him over here. So thank you so much, Chaz. I really appreciate it. All righty, let's go ahead and keep the show moving. So yeah, we went to the chat box and talked about why you wanted to adopt North Carolina. And there's probably another person you're looking forward to hearing from today um, on his way imminently is Sean Lovett, uh, former speech writer for President Obama and Hillary Clinton, as well as hosting Love It or Leave It, wonderful show. Um, in 2017, he founded Crooked Media, who is doing a wonderful partnership um, for us. So, um, you know, John was also <laughs> Nate, once named one of Washington's funniest celebrities before he left the Capitol forever. So we're going to be hearing from him very, very shortly. Um, so before we go into that, I just want to introduce our wonderful team today. So you're going to be hearing from me, the training director for Organizing Together. Um, in the Q&A, so which I saw that a lot of people have already been asking, in asking questions. Um, Tony Espinoza, who's our deputy organizing director, and Ted Cochran, who is our 
Deputy Digital Director or will be um, answering your questions in the Q&A. So please take a moment, go into the Q&A, ask a question if you like. If you put it in the chat, they won't see it. So put it in the Q&A box at the bottom. Uh, we're really excited to answer all your questions. And also, um, and also, we are going to be hearing toward the end um, from Kevin Parker, who was one of our wonderful field organizers. He'll be wrapping up the call for us. So uh, that is our team for tonight. Um, wonderful. So I'm um, just going to take a moment here to um, talk a little bit about our NC partners. Um, these are all of our partners who will be all, who are also doing lots of. Um, um, direct word of contact in the field right now. Um, you know, shout out to anyone who's on the call from our partners. We love you. We could not have done this without you. Um, so just very, very excited. That's this is our partners. Wonderful. So um, right now, I will. I want to go ahead and kick it over to John Lovett, who I see is on the call right now. Um, Hi. Hello, Mr. Lovett. So my wonderful to talk to you. Hello. Nice to see you. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. Um, well, uh, look, I am just wanted to say hi because we're so grateful to everybody that's been participating. The, the response to this organizing effort from organizing together from Vote Save America has been incredible. It's like exceeded our wildest expectations because there are so many people out there who want to be a part of this and want to figure out exactly what they can do to make the biggest difference this fall uh, and in these elections. So thank you so much for doing that. Uh, you know, this is obviously like such a, this is a dark time. It's a hard time. Um, none of us thought we would be in Zooms for this. We should be together. We should be work. We should be able to uh, be in the same place. We shouldn't have to um, do all this, but we do. And so in the most important election of our lifetime, figuring out how to change what it means to organize, change what it means to canvas, think through some of these really hard questions. It takes the biggest challenge we've ever faced and makes it that much harder. So I'm so grateful to everybody who's organizing this. I'm grateful to everybody who's participating. But I also, look, I'm here to make sure that you're ready, all right? I'm here to make sure that North Carolina is up to this. And so I believe that uh, there's an organizer who's gonna play a game today and I'm gonna put, I think it's his name is Peter. Is that Peter right there? Hey. Hi, Peter, nice to meet you. So uh, you're, you're from North Carolina? Uh, I'm actually from Connecticut, but I've been organizing in North Carolina for a while now. Oh, man. So your job's that much harder because, uh, look, you're going to call people with that, that Yale accent you bring to the table, that New Haven pizza, Greenwich, Connecticut insurance company accent, all right? And that makes it that much harder. That's okay. That's okay. All right? You're from Connecticut. But, all right, you need to know what it's like to canvas in North Carolina. So... There's a lot you're gonna have to do. You're gonna have to really um, uh, uh, bring your A game here. I'm gonna ask you some questions and you're gonna tell us what you would do as a North Carolina organizer. Okay, Peter, are you ready? I'm ready. All right. On your way to Canvas, you are surrounded by a cloud of lightning bugs. Your stomach is grumbling from the hamburger you ate from the cookout. You knew you shouldn't have gotten it all the way. I don't even know what these things, these feel too local to me. All right, you run to the nearest house, all right, and ask to use the bathroom. Oh my goodness. The man who lives there offers you moonshine to take the edge off and tells you he doesn't trust the mail, but he's excited to vote in November. What do you do? Well, so this, was, this is not the first time I've uh, used the bathroom in someone's, uh, in someone's house while canvassing, actually. Too personal, um, don't want your life story. <laughs> What do I do? I, well, I talked to him about how uh, important it is to, to vote by mail this year. Um, and especially, you know, with how unsafe it is to, to go outside sometimes uh, mm -hmm. with coronavirus and everything. Um, and the lightning bugs, of course, you got to watch out for those. So uh, voting by mail, much safer option. Um, and also about how easy it is to, um, to request uh, an absentee ballot. Um, I think Lexi's going to talk about that later, but um, you got to stay safe uh, from the lightning bugs and from coronavirus and uh, vote by mail. Next question. Uh, how do you respond if someone says voting by mail seems complicated, not unlike achieving the perfect balance of sweet and spicy barbecue sauce? Not an Eastern style barbecue sauce, mind you. We're talking Lexington. All right. Well, first of all, you've got to go with a vinegar based barbecue um, all the way. 
Um, mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. second of all, mm-hmm. it's not difficult. Uh, it's not difficult. Um, you can now register to vote online, which is incredible. Um, so a lot of people don't know that. This is the first time you can do that in North Carolina ever. Um, so we're coming really far in terms of that. Um, and you can enjoy your, your barbecue while you do it. Lexi, you had a really strong reaction to that barbecue question. It was, um, you felt, I, I, I felt, I felt as though uh, you were watching me delicately walk across a tightrope, tightrope over a, over a, over a deep, deep ravine. Uh, have I offended the, 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 the North Carolina barbecue community, do you think? So um, one thing is that you can't ever um, satisfy the North Carolina barbecue community because we are evenly split as we are a purple state. We don't know who to choose sometimes. Everyone even wants to be Eastern with vinegar. I like to get personally lost in the sauce with Mexican style barbecue. So okay. I have very strong opinions about it. <laughs> I get that. Look, I don't know exactly what you mean by getting lost in the sauce, but I know that it's something that I would want to do. Oh, John, I know that- <laughs> come, come on down to Lexington. Come on out of Charlotte. Let's get you some real barbecue, huh? That's what Go I believe me. Nothing would make me happier. There is nothing I love more than going to swing states and eating until I can no longer move. Swing states do food better, all right? They just do. That's right. And I, look, I'm gonna, I have a whole separate conversation about this I need to have with Wisconsin. Peter, thank you, Lexi, for your help. Peter, one last question. Is it mm-hmm. okay to call North Carolina State Board of Elections if you wanna argue about barbecue or is it just for reporting voter suppression? I think you can do both, um, Mm -hmm. but, and I would honestly encourage you to do both, um, but you should definitely do it if you want to call about voter suppression um, or if you have any questions about registering, but there's also great resources online. Um, But, you know, if if you've got questions about barbecue, uh, they'll be happy to share their opinions with you, just like Lexi, you know. Peter, uh, you've won the game, I guess. Of course you've won. Uh, I I can't believe it. You've overcome the kind of, Bridgeport, uh, Long Island Sound uh, energy, all right, to successfully help organize North Carolina. Uh, Thank you for playing. Thank you all for what you're doing. We're also, it's such an incredible thing to see so many people dedicated to this incredible fight. It gives me so much hope. I hope it does the same for you. And, uh, you know, we have a lot of work to do, so I'm going to leave it to the experts. But it was so nice to meet you, Uh, Peter, Lexi, everybody in North Carolina. Thank you. Thank you so much, John. Take care. Thank you so much for being here. I hope to see uh, John Lovett soon in Lexington, but he'll make his choice. All righty, wonderful. That's such a nice treat, y'all. That was really fun. Well, let's go ahead and continue on. So, um, you know, I just want to level set. We are about to go into our content for the evening, um, and we're going to start with a quick state of the states. So there are so many of you all here who are native North Carolinians here to dig your bare hands into the soil. And so many of y'all from all over the country who want to do the same. We all welcome you to the old, old, to the old North states. And to start with, against my better judgment, let's take you all back in time to 2016. So let's talk about what happened y'all. In 2016, The current president won North Carolina by 173,000 votes, which is a larger margin than Obama versus Romney in 2012. Now, both candidates saw less people vote for them along the party line than in 2012. However, there's good news. North Carolina bolstered a higher turnout than um, previous general campaigns. There are only 24 counties in North Carolina that went blue, just 24 out of the 100 counties that we have. And they are scattered all over the state, not just in metropolitan areas. So as we move forward from 2016, the state has seen a new energy around breaking, you know, bad habits. You know how you work at breaking bad habits. Well, North Carolina has um, broke bad habits like, you know, having a supermajority in the state house and um, bad habits like, you know, not having good voter turnout during the midterms. Not only do we exceed Not only did we have the highest voter turnout in 2018 since 1994, we both the majority in the the state house. We are working. 
we are working and this is the and this is the this is exactly how, what we have been doing, what we have working for since 2012, since 2008. We have absolutely, we're starting to win. And we are on the upswing after years of activism. We have a wonderful governor, Governor Roy Cooper. Roy is our boy here in North Carolina. He has been helping us get exactly where we need to be. I want you to really sit for a second and really think about where would North Carolina be right now without Roy Cooper? Because we fought for that election and Roy Cooper won his race with a right, right over the line at 10,000 votes. That's such a small margin, you all. Every vote counts here in North Carolina. So, you know, no matter how this overview, ma overview makes you feel, this is our time to shine. This is it, this is our moment. So um, let's continue. So let's get some quick voting um, facts about voting in North Carolina. So the general election here is Tuesday, November 3rd, and also the deadline to register to vote is Monday, October 9th. One stop early voting is from October 15th to October 31st, a 15 day period. There is no voter ID for the fall election, no voter ID for the fall election. And also as um, Peter and John were talking about, any question that you have or any information you need to delineate and find out for yourself will be on a North Carolina State Board of Elections website. Go ahead and click that link over there or write that down for future purposes. One huge thing about North Carolina voting that I just grazed over in the, in the previous two slides was that we have one stop early voting and we have fought to protect this certain staple of our voting culture here in North Carolina since I was in high school and I'm almost 30. So it's been a long, long time and we will keep fighting. And as you can see, and as you look at this slide, you can imagine why we've been fighting for this. North Carolina utilizes a one-stop absentee voting, and during this 15-day period, you can register, you can update your voter registration or your name or your address on it, and you can also cast your ballot all in one. That is wonderful. The Board of Elections designates a couple of sites within every county, all of our 100 counties, where you can cast an early vote ballot. Historically, Democrats, Black people, and people of color cast their votes early across the state. It's what we do. This is what we do. So, of course, we've been fighting for this for a long time because this is a part of our voting culture. But this is absolutely something you should know about it all. But, you know, now, all that being said about a system designed to leverage power and give a voice to the people, that same system built in a world of institutionalized racism will have its pitfalls. So I just wanna kick it over to our wonderful Deputy Digital Director, Ted Cochran. He's gonna talk a little bit about his experience um, voting. Ted? Thank you, Lexi. So voting early doesn't always mean voting is easy. Uh, in 2016, you can see by these pictures, we experienced long lines because of limited early voting locations compounded by reduced hours and days for early voting. We know this, that long lines lead to discouraged voters. The long lines specifically impacted metropolitan areas with higher populations, but it also hurt the turnout in rural communities that have limited access to transportation. So these two photos that you're seeing, I took on the last day of early voting on a Saturday in uh, two locations that are right outside of Raleigh. Uh, this is Nightdale and Cary, North Carolina. The same scene repeated itself throughout the triangle and especially in Southeast Raleigh. Uh, from when the polls opened to when they closed, people waited for hours in line to cast their votes. Uh, you would see chance of stay in line when people started getting discouraged. It was people as a community up and down that line trying to make sure that everybody stood there and casted their votes. Uh, some of you may be familiar with pizza at the polls. We were delivering pizzas nonstop to these people waiting in line. Strangers held spots in line for each other so other people can go and use the bathroom. And this isn't an isolated situation. We've already seen it occur in Georgia and we know it can happen again in North Carolina. And I think one of the biggest ways that we can overcome some of these delays is by pre-registering people to vote before they go and uh, do these one-stop votings or the same day registration and early votings here in North Carolina. So I'll kick that back over to you, Lexi. 
Thank you so much, Ted, for your testimony there. Um, I, I've been organizing in North Carolina for about 10 years, and the amount of times I've had to order pizza for people standing at the polls, um, go run out and buy water for people standing at the polls. Um, even um, in 2016 on Duke, Duke University's campus, getting Panera for students so they can stay in line for the last two days for the last two hours of voter of um of the of the polls on their college campus it's everywhere um so yes absolutely just because we have early voting does not mean it's the easiest thing to do so i just wanted to let you all know all that so this is the reality of vote of millions of voters in north carolina and honestly we deserve better if only if only if only there was a more accessible system to make voting overall easier and to make register registry to vote in a pandemic easier. Oh my God, look there. Online voter registration. You see what I did there? This is brand new, y'all. Get excited. Get hyped. We're going to go ahead and figure out what all this is. You are going to be a part of history. We need you. You are a part of North Carolina's story of defeating Donald Trump and his dangerous policies this November. You are joining the efforts to make awareness around voter registration in North Carolina for the general election and to make sure they do it. That's a really big deal. That's a really big deal. Even if you sit right now from Oregon and you're just like, how can I help? This is how you can help. All right. so. I'm getting a lot of energy from the chat right now. I'm getting a lot of energy from you all. So I want you all to go into the chat box and share the last piece of exciting news you received. What was the exciting news? For me, it was absolutely the DACA decision this morning. Um, it really talks about, you know, if you keep organizing, you keep, you stay the course and you keep pushing along, you absolutely will get to the, to exactly what we want, a win. What's the best thing? I'm seeing DACA all up and down these, um, this chat. Wonderful. Get hype, guys. Get hype. This is so exciting. So exciting. And this is really wonderful. I want you to take, I want you to remember how you felt when you first saw your last piece of exciting news. I want you to take that and bottle it. Bottle all that energy together because I want you to put it on reserve. Because every single time you talk about online voter registration in North Carolina, you absolutely need to be just this excited because not a lot of us know about not a lot of people in the state know knows about this so we have to bring awareness information and excitement that energy absolutely absolutely you're going to hear something along the lines of wait we can register to vote online now well if that's correct chet you can now register to vote or make registration changes through the um, North Carolina's Department of Motor Vehicles website. County boards will send mail confirmations of new and updated registrations once they do that. And it's the simplest, safest, and healthiest way for North Carolinians to register to vote. So excited. I'm hype, hope you all, hope you all are too. So for all my people on the call that live in North Carolina for four plus years, this is a breath of fresh air. We can finally, we don't have to go to a DMV to get registered to vote. We don't have to write on a registration form. We can just do it online. My goodness. But you know, it doesn't come out, doesn't come without its limitations. In order to register to, register to vote online, you have to have a driver's license or a DMV issued ID, which is in North Carolina, a state identification card. Now, through, though this is like relatively easy, tech access and literacy is a um, barrier for voters. Now, I do want to also clarify that I'm not talking about reading or writing literacy. I'm talking about tech literacy. Um, please remember that 40% of North Carolina is rural. And rural does not mean we don't talk to them. Absolutely not. When I was referencing um, 2016 and the earlier slides of the 24 counties that uh, were went blue, at least 10 of those counties were in rural areas. And also, um, our organizers have been concentrated largely in rural areas because that's where our people are. And these are the voices that we want to elevate. And also, and the last point I'm going to say here is that some communities 
are distrustful of registration security. And on that topic, I want to encourage you all to look up the 2018 um, congressional NC9 race. Um, for all of you that don't know, a campaign operative um, for a uh, Republican congressional candidate was convicted of voter fraud by stealing and purposely discarding ballots in predominantly Black communities, garnishing, garnering national attention and resulting in a new election. You've heard about, you've heard about voter fraud. It really happened here. Um, and you also may have seen it on Jeopardy. It was a clue. That was a moment. Um, so as you are talking to North Carolinians about registering to vote online, you might get pushback. It's imperative that you understand where that pushback is coming from, that you understand the context of it, and, you know, don't just dismiss them. They have a right to feel nervous about um, registration security. Look what happened in the past. But you absolutely should keep talking to them and invest. You have to invest. So let's just look a little bit about the process to register online. Um, it's your task to guide voters with up-to-date information. And this is, this slide here is what it looks like. Um, the quickest link to the voter registration um, place is the NCBSC website. You can either continue or as a guest or sign in. And the process to submit information is an automated chat system. So it's very, very easy but you know, not too easy, but it's pretty easy to do, to do with. So let's also talk about some frequently asked questions. Um, it's really important for you all to know um, how to dig into some of these questions because you need to know for your own conception and also you will at some point be asked these questions. So if someone does not want to follow the online portal, they can download the registration. It gives them that option as they're going through the um, Plains and new residents of North Carolina would need to have residency for at least 30 days prior to the election. Um, and lastly, um, if you are 18 by election day, you can register now. For example, my sister is 17 years old and she actually voted in the March primary. She's already registered to vote, she's good to go, and she's turning 18 actually in four days. So she's good to go. So get your 17 year olds registered to vote. Um, also, some more frequently asked questions. Um, there is no voter ID, but there is a small exception for new voters uh, without a um, social security number. So you can, you are asked to put your social security number um, during the, on the fields for the voter registration online application. But if you do not put that there, you will be asked once you do vote to show another form of identification. Also, new voters who are registering during the older, early vote, sorry, new vote, new voters who are registering during the early voting period will also be asked to um, show another form of identification if that is the first time you are registering to vote during early vote. Lastly, if someone has been found of a found guilty of a felony, they can only register after they've completed their sentence, and that includes probation or parole or receiving a pardon. So, you know, uh, different states have different parameters around, um, uh, around people who have been guilty, guilty of a felony, but what you need to know is North Carolina's facts. After they completed their sentence, and that includes probation or par and or parole, and receiving a pardon, at that point in time, they can register to vote. All right, so I just threw a lot of information at you. It is all okay, but we're gonna spend just a few moments here um, brainstorming ideas about how to get the word out. Um, you know, I think a lot of people here from different parts of the country, um, but you know, let's just take some, just take a moment and just talk about what that might look like, how to get the word out about online voter registration in a state that you don't live in during a pandemic. So what are some of the things that, um, I see the chat is already going off, so one of the, some of the things here I'll say, text banking, phone banking, talk to people you know in North Carolina, absolutely, making a Facebook post, churches, um, high schoolers, 
uh, multilingual communication to extend the reach. Absolutely, absolutely. Shamey family to get involved. Hey, whatever works. <laughs> whatever works. Um, no Christmas if it don't help. Y'all are a riot. <laughs> this is fun. Postcards, get ads in newspapers, some local newspapers, maybe even a letter to the editor, which is a very, very strong organizing tactic. Absolutely. Like, hey, did you know, did you know that you can register online? I didn't. Here you go. Things like that. Local radio. Oh, these are some wonderful, wonderful ideas. Say, I know Lexi. <laughs> you guys are funny. Funny TikToks. Meet people where they are. I think that's exactly right. Let's be creative about the way that we are telling people um, that they have a chance to register a vote right now. Wonderful. Absolutely. And see votes, a hashtag? Absolutely. Absolutely. Hashtags. This is so, so wonderful. All righty. Thanks, y'all. Keep it coming. Any ideas you have for the remainder of our, um, for the remainder of our webinar, just keep them coming. Um, right now, I'm going to go ahead and kick it over to one of our fabulous field organizers, Cameron Parker, and he's going to wrap us up. Cameron, take it away. All right. I love the energy and the creativity that's still going on in the chat with all that wonderful stuff we just learned about online voting. And y'all are throwing out some wonderful ways that we could get the community engaged and even our family and friends to let them know about this. And as we channel that energy and we keep that going, let's just recap some of the key things that we should keep in mind with online voting. If you remember anything at all from the training that Lexi just went through, remember this that online voting is safe, healthy, and simple. This is the message that we want to send to all North Carolinians that we talk to, to let them know that this process is safe, healthy, and simple, and it's okay to do. And the reason you're here, the reason all of us are going to work all of our butts off in North Carolina, the reason we're going to get everyone we can to vote online, or to, to register to vote online, is that it's gonna give us a big edge in November. It's gonna give us that big edge in November because voting online is efficient. The process allows us to bank a bunch of voters really early, and then we have even more time to reach out to voters in North Carolina throughout the state in more creative ways. Now, some of you might be thinking, what are my next steps? What do I need to do now? What can I do in this moment? Well, first, you can share this knowledge with friends who want to help. It's going to take all of us together to defeat Donald Trump's agenda in this next election. So just let anyone you know about, anyone you can think of, let them know what we're doing and what's happening and let them know this information. You can also join us for our final two events we're going to have here at Organizing Together this month. One being um, first the Juneteenth celebration. This is a great opportunity for you to start learning the constituency that you're going to be interacting with. Voting is essential, it's important, and we want to began to learn the members in our community who we're going to be reaching out to. In this first event, the Juneteenth celebration, recommitting to the work of justice on um, tomorrow, on um, June 19th. It is the 155th anniversary of Juneteenth. And our nation right now is at a point where Black lives are at center stage. And this is an opportunity to even build upon that momentum and that energy and to meet our community at this wonderful event. The second one is gonna be a Faith in Politics event. That's gonna be Monday, June 22nd. And North Carolina is full of some incredible faith leaders who have been committed to this work and who remain committed to this work. And this is an opportunity that you would get a chance to learn that North Carolina faith community and really those intersections of faith, of, faith and politics which is a big part of North Carolina's identity. So these two events would be a wonderful events for you to attend. Also next week, this is it. You can join us for our final training here as we head into the general election. 
I know you're so motivated. I know you're determined. I know you're eager. I know you're ready to just get out there and, and energize your community and reach out to people. And we're going to have one more training to get you prepared for that. Our special guest is going to be Dan Pfeiffer. And we look forward to seeing all of you there and invite your family and friends and more people to join up with us in this fight. So thank you for your time tonight, and I hope you really enjoyed the pre presentation. And I'm going to toss it back over to the fabulous Letsy. Thank you so much, Cameron. Oh, what a wonderful job. Thank you. Um, just before, um, actually before we close, I just want to clarify one thing that's popping up in the chat a lot. Um, we, North Carolina does not have the ability to vote online. We are talking about and always talking about online voter registration. We are talking about online voter registration all. So for everyone who wanted um, clarification in the chat box, we are talking about online voter registration, not, um, not actually voting online because we still can't do that. So um, also for the Zoom for next week, um, for the last training we have with Dan Five for next week, all states will be on the same Zoom. So, you know, we have six states with organizing together and everyone's broken out into their states right now. But for the last one, um, next week we will be together. We will all be together once again. So wonderful. So awesome. So we have, I've grown really close to you all. You all have some really wonderful energy. I am so happy that this particular group um, adopted North Carolina. You guys are absolutely fabulous, completely fabulous. Thank you all so, so much for a wonderful training. Thank you for joining us. I hope to see you next week, and I definitely will see you out in the field. Thank you all so much. I hope you have a wonderful evening. Thank you.